video, we're going to look at those lovely buttons on the left-hand side. Let's start with a blank project and we'll assign this sample to track A1 using the method shown in the previous video. Starting at the top, if I select Level, I can now set the maximum level of this track. If I deselect level and return to normal mixer mode, the fader still controls the volume of that track, but in relation to where I just set it in the level section. This is a great way to set up all the relative levels of your tracks so that you can just throw the faders up to max in mix mode whilst performing. You can also record the level, which I'll show you when we get to sequencing. Moving down, if I select pitch and move the fader, I can change the pitch of the sample. You can change the pitch resolution of the fader by pressing shift and the pad to bring up the track settings menu. Scroll down to pitch resolution and your options are classic 16, classic 32, semitones, diatonic, aeolian and fine. I'll give you a couple of examples. First here's pitch resolution set to classic 16. and now set to fine. If I navigate back to the track settings menu again and switch the audio engine to classic, the old school drop sample method will be employed and the bit depth will drop to 12 and you'll hear the crunchy aliasing effect when changing pitch downwards. To reset all settings at any time, hold back and hit the pad for the track you're on. Let's move on to envelope. By default, there are two hi-fi envelopes per track, although there is an optional third classic envelope that we'll talk about in a moment. For now, we'll just stick to the hi-fi 2. You can cycle between them using the B button for the track you're on. The first envelope has a V above it to denote that it is responsible for volume contouring although it can also be used for pitch and filter modulation. The second envelope is labelled by two dots. For quick changes, you can use the stacked knobs and the fader. The top knob alters attack time, the bottom knob alters sustain, and the fader alters release. But for more precise changes, press the A button to bring up the Hi-Fi envelope editor. We're now looking at the full settings for an attack, hold, decay, sustain, hold, release envelope, or AHD SHR. Fader 1 controls attack, Fader 2 hold, Fader 3 decay, Fader 4 sustain, Fader 5 hold, and Fader 6 release. Now with an envelope on a traditional synthesizer that uses free running oscillators, the attack, decay and release stages all refer to time and the overall length of the envelope can be changed, which works because the oscillators continually output a sound. With a sampler like the S2400, the sound source is a sample that has a beginning and an end. So the envelope stages refer to a percentage of the total sample length, except for the sustain, which refers to a level. However, the envelope can be shorter than the sample length if desired. To alter this, navigate to the sigma symbol and lower the percentage. As well as volume, we can use Hi-Fi Envelope 1 to modulate pitch in either direction with Fader 7 and filter cutoff in either direction with Fader 8. Because Hi-Fi Envelope 1 is also assigned to volume contouring as mentioned, I'm going to use Hi-Fi Envelope 2 for pitch modulation. To switch envelopes, press B. For filter cutoff, I'm going to return to envelope 1, but first I need to set up the filter. Press the envelope button again to return to mixer mode, and now the stacked knob controls the filter for this track. The top knob is for cutoff and the bottom resonance. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm going to close the filter and add a middling amount of resonance. I'll now press envelope again and then A to return to the Hi-Fi envelope editor. I'll use fader 8 to set the filter modulation amount, faders 1 through 6 to adjust the envelope stages, and the encoder to adjust the envelope length. If you want to make fine adjustments for any of the envelope values, or the pitch or filter modulation values, then you can do this within the Hi-Fi envelope editor. Depress the encoder or use the enter button to tab to the setting in question, whereupon you can rotate the encoder or use the arrow keys to make fine adjustments. Finally, let's look at the classic envelope. Whilst envelope is selected, press shift and A on the track in question to bring up the envelope settings menu for that track. Select the volume envelope and change it to classic. Press back to return and now you have a two-stage volume envelope with sustain hold followed by release. The fader adjusts the envelope length but the stacked knobs are not active. With the classic volume envelope activated, you can now use the B button to cycle through the classic volume envelope labelled V, Hi-Fi envelope 1 labelled with a single dot and Hi-Fi envelope 2 labelled with a double dot. You can still access the Hi-Fi envelope editor as before, but there is no separate editor for the classic envelope as it's only a two-stage affair and it only contours volume. As an example, I can use the classic envelope for volume, Hi-Fi envelope 1 for filter, and Hi-Fi envelope 2 for pitch modulation. Last but not least, let's look at loop slash slice. Select it and then press the A button for the track you're working with and you're greeted with the waveform editor. Now is a good moment to mention that you can use the help button in many areas of the S2400, in this case bringing up the slice help. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see that it recommends setting up your faders thusly. Once done, press help again to return. Now you'll see why we just set that up, because Fader 1 adjusts the sample start point by percentage. Fader 2 adjusts the sample start point in milliseconds. And Fader 3 in samples. Faders 4 and 5 edit the loop point in percentage and milliseconds, which we'll look at in a moment. And Faders 6, 7 and 8 edit the end point in samples, milliseconds and percent, respectively. For a closer look, you can zoom in using F3 and zoom back out using F1. Pressing and holding F3 will zoom all the way in, and pressing and holding F1 will zoom all the way out. F2 will show you the zoom extent, which is the range between your start and end points. Press and hold F2 to lock the zoom extent, and press it again to unlock. F4 will force the start point to a zero crossing. F5 will force the loop point to a zero crossing, which I'll show you in a minute, and F6 will force the end point to a zero crossing. F7 and F9 shift the slice point left and right. This will only work if the slice is small enough to shift. F8 sets the loop repetitions from 1 to 99, but again we'll look at that in a moment when we cover looping. You can now slice your sample however you want. To activate looping, press B. As mentioned before, you can now use faders 4 and 5 to set the loop point and F5 to force it to a zero crossing. Press F8 to set the loop time by choosing the number of repetitions. 
You can also tab along to the clock symbol and use the encoder or arrows to adjust the loop time. So I'm going to set the loop point to the start of the second bar of this drum recording. Then once done, I'll tell it to repeat twice. So we get the whole groove and loop and again, yeah baby. A couple more things to mention, you can press the level button for options to normalize your sample and the save button to access options to save your sample or sliced sample. This can either be a new file saved in a project or folder of your choosing or it can overwrite the original. In memory, normalization is non-destructive and can be changed multiple times without modifying the sample data. But when the sample or slice is saved, the normalization level is permanently applied to the saved file. If in doubt, use save to project or save to folder. You can save multiple slices from the same sample using this method, but this is more effectively done using multi-mode, which we'll look at in the next video.